Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at RESTful APIs in Unity. We're going to take a look at how we do it, why they're useful, and a couple of examples of how you could actually use this in your own game. Now, there's a few things to note. If your game is going to be using an online API call, then it's going to need an internet connection. If it doesn't, you can't get this data. So just bear that in mind. And the one that I've selected is going to be of absolutely no use to anybody, but this is just for an example, and we're going to be using chucknorris.io. And what this is going to do, this is going to return a JSON format response from the API, and it's just going to have a Chuck Norris joke. So like I said, this is going to have absolutely no use in your games whatsoever, unless your game revolves around Chuck Norris jokes, then go ahead, have at it. But this is just to show you very simply how you can go ahead and make these get calls from an API. So there's a few things that this API actually tells us in its documentation. So the get request needs to go to https api.chucknorris.io slash jokes slash random. So if we click that, we should actually see the JSON that's being returned. But that's all well and good, we can read that, but we want this in our game. So let's get working on it. But before we start, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go and follow him on Twitter, check out his website. He's got a new game in the works that I'm sure you're all going to enjoy. So go and give him a follow, do him a favour. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. I love you guys. Okay, so let's just take a look at what I've got here. I've just got a standard button and a text mesh pro element. The button is going to generate a new joke and the text inside the text mesh pro element is just going to display it. Really simple stuff. And the script for that, I have a method for a new joke and inside here we're going to set our joke text to whatever we've got as our response. And that button is linked up to our new joke method. Now we're going to create a new C sharp script. And this is going to be our joke. Before we make any calls, we need an object to actually parse our JSON response into. So if we take a look at that example response, we can see that we have different keys. We have a string array called categories. We have another string called created at. We have icon URL, ID updated at the actual URL for the joke, and then the value, which is the joke itself. So we need to create an object that this data can be parsed into. So inside a joke, we don't want this to be a mono behavior. We don't need any namespaces, and we also don't need our start and update. What we do need, though, is for this to be serializable. So we can add the system.serializable attribute above our class, and we're good to go. So now all we need to do is create public variables that match the key names inside of the API response. Now safe typing all of these out. I've got them right there. So as you can see, we've got the string array for categories, created at, icon URL, ID, blah, 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 blah. Now value is going to be the only one that we're really interested in. So we don't actually need those. The call would still work because it can populate the value. But it's always good practice just to have your complete API response mapped, just in case you ever need one of these other fields. So we can save that. Now that we've got the joke class, we can actually make an API call and get a joke. So let's create one more C Sharp script, and this one I'm just going to call API Helper. Now this script is going to have absolutely no bearing on the Unity engine whatsoever. So we can make this static. So we'll get rid of mono behavior, get rid of the start and update, and we'll make this a static class. And we're only going to need one method in here, and that's going to be public static, and it's going to return a joke. I'm going to call this get new joke. Now inside of here, we're not actually going to need our system namespaces, but we are going to need to be using system.net and we're also going to need to be using system.io 
system.net because we're going to be dealing with HTTP web responses. So we're going to need that namespace in there and system.io because we need to instantiate a stream reader to actually read our response. Now this is actually going to be a relatively simple task because we're not actually going to be doing much with this response. We're just going to be displaying the value out on screen and that's it. So let's get to actually reading this. So the first thing we're going to need is a HTTP web request. So that's our actual request that we send out to gather the information. So we'll call that request and we'll set that equal to web request dot create and inside here is where we need to pass the URL that's going to return this, which is this. So what every API will have its actual target URL that you need. So we just copy that and we pop that inside as a string. Now as you can see we have this error because currently we're using web request but we need this to be passed to a HTTP web request. So we can just go ahead and cast that like so. So now that we've actually got our request we can interrogate that and find its response. And the way that we do that, we set up a HTTP web response, call that response. And again, we need to cast this. So we'll just do this straight away. HTTP web response. And that's going to be our request dot get response. Simple as that. Now we need to read that response. And the way we need to do that, we need to pass it through a stream reader. So this is where our system.io namespace comes into play. So we can just create a new stream reader, call that reader, set it equal to a new stream reader. And what we want to pass in is our response dot get response stream. So now we have all our data locally inside of our stream reader. All we need to do is get the string JSON response from it and then pass that into our joke. So that's two more lines of code. So we need to create a string, we'll call that JSON, and we'll set that equal to our reader dot read to end. So that's just going to grab all the text value, all the string from our reader and give it to us as an actual string. And at this point, JSON is going to look exactly like this. This is going to be our data that's been returned. So now the last thing we want to do is make that into a joke object. And the way that we can do that is we can just return, because remember we need to return a joke. And I'm going to use Unity's JSON utility. You can use any uh, JSON utility library that you like. This works perfectly fine for me. And we'll call from JSON. I'm going to want to pass in the type that we want to pass it to, which is joke. And then inside the parentheses, we want to pass in our JSON string. And that should be it. So we're creating our request. We're getting the response from that request. We're getting the value stream into a reader from the response. We're passing that reader into a string called JSON. And then we're going to pass that JSON into a joke object. So the last thing to do is actually call that method. So inside of our new joke, all I'm going to want to do is create a new joke. I'm calling it J, set that equal to API helper dot get new joke. And then we can set joke text dot text equal to J dot value. Remember value is our actual joke in the object. Now if we pop back over to Unity, you can see that my button is hooked up to new joke. So if we run this and press new joke, we should see a new joke pop up. Perfect. Chuck Norris can play the violin with a piano. Brilliant. And every time we press that, we're going to get a brand new Chuck Norris joke. So I hope that clears up a few questions that people may have had. I have been asked this question multiple times. How do I make a API call from inside of Unity? And there you have it. Like I said at the start of the video, just remember that this requires your game to have an internet connection 
and also dependent on the API that you're using you may have some limitations with that so make sure that you find out all that information prior to committing to put this into your game. So that's all I've got for you for this video. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bite-sized Unity hints and tips.